Hello everyone, welcome to Yashoda Hospital's online segment, The Health Talk Session. We are here today to discuss about the topic lung transplant and answer all your basic queries such as what is lung transplant, who should consider this and when should one undergo the surgery. I am Dr. Lakshmi and today we have with us Director of Lung Transplant Unit from Yashoda Hospitals, Hyderabad. Welcome sir. Hi, thank you. So sir, tell us more about yourself. So I am Dr. Apar Jindal. I am the Program Director for Advanced Lung Failure and Transplant Pulmonology at Yashoda Hospitals, Hyderabad. Basically, I am a pulmonologist by training who has gone through pulmonology, core pulmonary training, interventional training, allergy immunology and then into advanced lung care and uh, lung transplantation. And now I am practicing more of advanced lung failure and lung transplantation uh, rather than the other aspects of uh, pulmonology. Uh, this has become my passion and I hope to help more and more patients who are stuck at the uh, timeline where no more help can be available at normal pulmonary centers. Those are the kind of patients that I like to cater to and that uh, we serve in our advanced lung failure unit at Yashoda Hospitals. That's great sir. So the basic question first, what is lung transplant? An excellent question to start with. Thank you so much for that. So basically when we talk about lung transplant, what we are trying to say is if at all you suffer from a disease which is chronic, meaning that the disease is not acute onset, it has been developing in the lungs for a period of time. It, there are some exceptions to it like COVID-19 of course, but yes, this is usually chronic diseases where your lungs are slowly getting destroyed and you've hit a point where medications are of no help. You've come to a point where you need to be on oxygen therapy, where you are greatly reduced in your exercise capacity, you're mostly bedridden. And these are the sort of patients who cannot function better with other medical therapies. At that point of time, changing their lungs or transplanting their lungs and providing them with a new set of lungs which can help them better correct their oxygen and carbon dioxide disbalance and bring them back into normal life and i emphasize on the point bring them back into normal life that is the whole point of lung transplantation that's great i think it's more like a second life for the patients i couldn't have put it better yeah so tell me sir how did you develop your passion towards this field that is <laughs> lung transplant <laughs> All right. So lung transplant happened for me. So I was basically practicing as a sleep interventional pulmonary specialist at um, Apollo Hospitals Chennai at that point of time. And the first major lung transplant unit was being set up in Chennai. And uh, I had an opportunity to work with them. I did my training in lung transplantation at that point of time and got so involved with these end stage lung disease patients, the care for them and the satisfaction that you can get, the happiness that you can get when you, as you said, grant a second inning or a new lease of life to a patient who has been, you know, shut doors and shown away from every other facet of medical field. It's just absolutely amazing. And I think that is what pulled me into it and is keeping me going. That's wonderful. So sir, tell us more about what is the process that the patient or the family should undergo when one is considering lung transplant because I'm sure most of us are not aware of this concept. Excellent. Thank you for that question. I think that's a, one of the most important questions that a patient needs to know that once you've been advised for a lung transplant, what you need to do. Basically at that point of time, when you've been advised to undergo a lung transplantation, the first thing that you need to do is to reach out to a transplant unit. You need to make an appointment with a transplant pulmonologist. Let him review all your records. To facilitate that, since you know we understand that most of these patients are oxygen driven, they are dependent on oxygen for their survival, and they cannot move around much, they are mostly bedridden or confined to their homes. So we conduct peripheral OPDs in about 16 different cities across the country wherein you don't need to come to Hyderabad for the evaluation or you just don't need an online appointment but in a city very near you you would be able to see me so me and my team members we do these OPDs on a regular basis in these cities including all the major metros Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Hy we are based in Hyderabad, Chennai, Bangalore and so many others once you've had your results assessed by a transplant pulmonologist and of course you've been advised to further take the process of lung transplantation making sure that there is no absolute contraindication means you can undergo a transplant the next step is the assessment now the assessment here does not pertain to simple surgical assessment like in the case of a hernia or an appendix transplant lung transplant is a life altering surgery 
we need to make sure that you're not going to end up with any other organ failure or because of the complications from the disease, there is no any other organ damage. That means the assessment is a comprehensive body assessment. We check all the organs from head to toe, including your liver, your pancreas, your kidneys, your brain, your muscles, your bones, your digestive system. Everything undergoes evaluation. So it's a long standing process. It's a process that takes uh, around 80 to 85 tests over four to five days of time. And once you go through this, a few critical questions are answered. Do you really need a transplant? Can you undergo the transplant? Will you survive the transplant, meaning the surgical risk that will be uh, you know, presented to you while undergoing the surgery? Whether you need a single lung transplant, a double lung transplant, or a combined heart and lung transplant? And thirdly, if there are any other problems, such as diabetes, or which is maybe uncontrolled or uncontrolled hypertension, severe malnourishment, bone density lowering, you know, reflux disease, which is one of the very common diseases associated with lung diseases. So we tend to fix these and then we talk about a transplant. Now, once this assessment is done and all these parameters are arranged, they have been ascertained and therapy has been started for that, the patient is enrolled into a rehabilitation program. Now, this is slightly different from simple pulmonary rehabilitation because we are not focusing only on your breathing. We are focusing on a total body development. We need your muscles to get better. We need your bones to get stronger. We need you in the right mental space to undergo a life altering surgery and then transplant education. So you and your family, the entire family will undergo education about what transplant means, what the process will be, what are the risks, what are the benefits, what may be the complications and what will be the life after transplant. That will be the most important thing, right? Any questions you have keep coming back to us during this period. The best point at uh, this point of time, what I can say is Yashoda is blessed with the major, the biggest donor program in the country. While the entire country does about two or three donations in the entire week, Yashoda as a hospital group does about two or three donations per week. Meaning the waiting time for getting donor lungs, once you've been assessed and once you've been certified for transplantation, put on the government control list as a transplant recipient is very low. If you're fortunate enough, it may be quicker. If there are some delays, there may are delays, but the day that a donor, which is a ABO, that means the blood group, and size matched for you is available, you undergo the transplant surgery. The typical recovery period is about one month, three weeks to four weeks over here. Some patients who do fairly well in their rehabilitation are even discharged as early as two weeks. Some patients may take a little bit longer, depending upon your physical fitness and your physical abilities, your mental readiness while going into the surgery. Everything depends upon that. And once you're out of the hospital, you're free to get back into normal life as soon as possible. Of course, you stay connected to us. There are some investigations, there are some tests which are involved at a routine basis. You keep doing that and you keep sending the info to us and we will keep advising you on what you need to do for staying healthy. I think that's very well explained. Uh, so I'm sure during this pandemic, you must be on your toes most of the time and long surgical hours as well. So how did you balance your personal life and your professional life? Bad question. So there was no personal life during the pandemic. <laughs> It was all professional work. So we did great work during the pandemic. I think um, in this particular institute we served, we had one of the biggest ICU setups in the country which catered to COVID-19 patients. In the transplant unit or the advanced lung failure units, we were running almost close to 20 ECMOs simultaneously, which is a big, a big, big number, one of the biggest numbers all across the world. That means we were catering to so many sick patients which could not be handled anywhere else. We did about 12 COVID related transplants as well, which is again a, a huge number anywhere in the world. One of the earliest transplants done for COVID-19 patients were done by us. And uh, of course that took away most of the time. So managing between taking ICU calls, receiving new patients, airlifting patients, almost close to 100 patients were airlifted from all across the country. And these are the patients where we sent our team the patients were put on ECMO in whichever hospital it was in whichever part of the country and then using an air ambulance we brought them to us. So in between you know juggling time between getting new patients, handling the ICU calls, managing the transplants, the donor problems as well as the recipient problems that the COVID-19 pandemic ensued. Yes it was tough but I think we all have proof that we will prevail and we have managed to survive through COVID-19. Absolutely. So I think most of our viewers are asking this question. What are the results one can expect after one undergoes lung transplant? Excellent. Again, so one thing that we need to clearly understand when you talk about transplant is it is not a life-giving surgery. 
See, you will live your natural life. What we are trying to do is get you back into normalcy. A state of life when you need extra support of oxygen for your each and every breath, when you're not able to walk even a few steps before without getting breathless despite oxygen support, where complications because of lung problems have started affecting your heart, your lungs, your I mean your liver, your kidneys. That's not a life worth living. So the major issue is the deteriorated quality of life. And that is something that lung transplant gives you back. You get back into normal life. You can sing, you can dance, you can even go climb Mount Everest. So that means you get back into normal lifestyle. There is immune suppression that is involved because you're getting somebody else's organ. The body tries to reject it. We suppress your immunity by medicines to keep the lungs functioning normally. But that does not mean that you always live in fear of infection. You live in fear of rejection and you just have to stay enclosed in a bubble. That is an absolutely wrong myth about lung transplantation. The whole idea of transplant, as I said earlier, it is a life altering surgery. We take the disease process away and we shift it into a surgical process so that you get back into normal lifestyle as soon as possible. So talking about lung transplant and post-surgical care, what can a patient expect after a transplant? Very good. So the patient's expectation needs to be based on how well the patient behaved before the transplant. As simple as that. If you were a, you know, if you were a good patient, you did your rehabilitation, you took your medications in time, you took nutrition as we uh, have advised, you take good protein intake, you have a good enough calorie intake, and you exercise regularly. If you are a patient who can walk about 200 feet before the transplant, who can you know, lift half kg or one kg dumbbells and do some degree of exercises with that, you can expect a miraculous recovery after the transplant. Your recovery will be as early as two weeks or three weeks out of the hospital and in a month's time you will be back into normal life. You don't need to do anything more than that. But yes, sicker patients, especially patients who get transplanted from off the ventilator or patients who go to a transplant from an ECMO, they of course take a longer period of time. It's a little bit dicey with older patients because their natural healing ability, the natural repair processes slow down. So we often encounter complications like uh, kidney issues after a transplant. It's a long surgery. It's a surgery that happens around between you know 10 to 14 hours. The implantation time, the time taken to take out the lungs and put in new lungs is fairly less. It's about six hours or so. But then the entire surgery takes place over a longer period of time. And most of these surgeries are done either on pump on ECMO or a cardiopulmonary bypass pump. So definitely some degree of metabolic complications may arise out of that. But again, if you are a well rehab patient before the surgery, your recovery is faster. Some patients may come out on ECMO. They will need an ECMO support for another two to three days. Some patients may need that dialysis support for a few days after the transplant. But these are temporary. You need to understand that even if complications arise, these are manageable complications, which will get better over a period of time. Once you're fine, once you're better, as you recover, slowly you get off the ventilator, you start breathing on your own, the oxygen goes away, and then everything goes better. So important point again, and I cannot emphasize enough upon that, is rehabilitation. Your participation in physiotherapy and exercise before and after the transplant, that is what your recovery will depend upon. So sir, lung transplant is a recent trend. I'm sure when you started your medicine or when you were practicing, I'm sure this was not much into the market. So how did it pick up in our country? In the West, uh, Canada, US, they've been doing transplants for the last 40 years. When I say they've been doing transplants, means it's a well-established program over there for the last 40 years. S since the first transplants, which was done somewhere in the 60s, we've come a long way about understanding about organs, immune suppression, preservation, the transplantation techniques, the surgical skill required, and the post-transplant care. Unfortunately, it took 40 years to come to India. The first transplant in India was done in 2012 in Chennai. That was an international patient that was operated upon. And a month after that, the first Indian patient to be transplanted was done in Mumbai. Since then, it has been picked up. New units have come up. So currently, there are about four or five active units which are uh, there across the country. Of course, the volumes are different. We do large numbers where we do about five to seven transplants a month. The newer units we may do about one or two transplants. And that also fairly depends upon the availability of the donors. Since we are a very tuned transplant program and uh, we have a good donor program, we can do more patients. We can transplant more patients as compared to many other programs who depend upon other different hospitals across the country for getting the lungs. 
So sir, who should consider a lung transplant and when should they consider this? Thank you so much for asking that question. That's one of the most important questions again. See, as I said, any patient who has an end-stage lung failure is a candidate for lung transplant. But that does not mean that you start thinking about the transplant once you end up on the ventilator or you're on the verge of getting onto an ECMO. Your pulmonologist and you as a patient need to start thinking of it very early on. But if we simplify them, we need to look for three points. One, you have a disease which is irreversible and is now becoming either non-responsive or less responsive to your medical therapy. That means despite taking the best treatment, the best tablets, which may be very expensive at times also, you are still not getting better, but you are deteriorating in your clinical condition. Second point is that, that your exercise capacity is going down. Now, along with this exercise capacity going down, if you're starting to use oxygen or your oxygen requirement is going on increasing. And the third point is that you have something called as pulmonary hypertension. That means the effect on heart, the pressures of the heart start rising because of the lung problem. If you have any of these, you are a candidate for lung transplant. So it's definitely not the last resort that one should consider this, but uh, definitely the physician, the surgeon and the patient will definitely keep this in their mind from the initial stages itself, Absolutely. depending upon the patient. So it is the last resort, but it needs to be brought in much earlier into the discussion. Absolutely. So sir, before concluding this episode, what message you would like to give to the public out there regarding lung transplant specifically? So the message that needs to go out very firmly is number one, lung transplant is here. It is available in India and it is at par in terms of results and in terms of outcomes as any big program across the world. If you look at Toronto, Canada, if you look at uh, the various programs, the 40 odd programs in US or Australia or even in Vienna, we are doing good numbers and we are doing catering to the patients at the same level of expertise and the same level of care as anywhere else in the world. It is much, much cheaper as compared to anywhere else in the world. We have all the advanced equipment that we need to deal with these patients, whether it is from the pre-transplant period, from the time of assessment, rehabilitating the patients, doing good physiotherapy, providing them adequate nutrition and post-op care, meaning intraoperatively, the equipment that we use is world-class. Post-operatively, the ICU setup, the ECMO requirement, if it may be the CRRT or the continuous dialysis requirement, if maybe in case there is an airway issue or any complication, handling that by using interventional pulmonary tools, I think we have the best setup across the country and which uh, is equal, if not better, as compared to many other centers all across the world that are pr practicing lung transplantation. So the most important thing that I can say to the out there to the patients who are suffering from lung diseases is that you need not be scared the first point is it is an option that can be considered age is not a bar you can be as old as 75 or 76 years also but you can still undergo a transplant provided that you are physically able to do that so maintaining good health despite having a disease meaning taking part in regular physiotherapy to maintain good physical strength with you is the most important thing do not shy away from this option. Please discuss this option with your uh, primary physician, whether that be a pulmonologist, whether that be a cardiologist, whether that be an internist, but you need to go out and ask them about this option. The results are not bad, the results are good, and it is a life-altering surgery. You will have a new lease of life and you can get back into normal life after doing the transplant. Excellent, I think that's a wonderful talk what we had with you. So this brings us to the end of this episode. Hoping all your basic queries on lung transplant are answered by our expert doctors here. Thank you for joining and do watch us for the next week as well. Thank you and stay safe.